device reserved for wild catastrophes and sudden calls to man the battle stations. That's the cloister bell. Don't worry about that for now. It's not really terribly significant. The cloister bell? Oh no. Hello and welcome to the Cloister Bell podcast. I'm Liam um, and uh, my co-host is Rob. What ended up happening during the course of editing this podcast, um, the initial conversation that Rob and I had at the as a sort of introduction, uh, unfortunately gone through some uh, technical glitches and unfortunately turned out to be rather unusable. Um, And so what that meant is uh, some of our initial conversation where we were catching up and we were talking about, you know, times that we'd be spent with our families recently, what we've been up to, uh, in my case, doing that, also going to to a restaurant, recent book purchases, going to the cinema and all the rest of it. you don't get to listen to. It's a loss in the ether. Um, so this podcast begins whilst we were in the flow of having that conversation where we end up start talking about um, what we've been watching on television. So you catch up with us from that point on. I just thought I'd ex- uh, I'll explain all that because it would just sound like there's a, a really odd jump uh, of us just... It just wouldn't flow well, so hence this explanation. Um, hopefully... But it's still listenable, and the main reason for for doing the podcast, where we're, in this week we're reviewing two big Finnish audio adventures, that's there in its entirety. So um, apologies for, for for this, but it was unavoidable. Uh, but there you are. So that's the reason why, uh, in a few moments' time, you'll be hearing Rob and I just leaping into the middle of a conversation because that's exactly what ends up happening. Um, so you join us from that point on. Thank you. How about uh, what's uh, been watching anything on television or watching any films recently? Mm, a bit of television. Last we spoke, I'd watched an episode and a half of The Sandman. Um, I was a bit of a shame, ashamed of myself when editing the last podcast. Um, I didn't seem very enthusiastic about The Sandman, um, but since watching the full series, uh, I just think it's fantastic. Oh well, that's good. So it's so it's massively picked up. Oh yeah, and it was a ten episode run, and hmm. Neil Gaiman announced that they were dropping a bonus episode um, la- uh, earlier on in the week. So we got an eleventh episode, which I haven't watched yet. Oh wow! But that's a nice surprise. Yeah. And yeah, um, since. As, 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 uh, sorry to interrupt. I just because I, I saw an interview with uh, Neil Gaiman recently, which was to to promote the series, and he'd been saying that um, he'd been he's been basically pestered for the last thirty years to to have adaptations of the Sandman. He's just constantly resisted, but he said for some reason on this occasion, um, he decided to go along with it because it was just this feeling that everything had sort of like aligned and the the right people were were involved and. From what I can gather, he seems quite happy with uh, the way things are going with it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the time was now. Um, Mm -hmm. Since watching that, I've started watching something which I've been putting off for years, which is Lucifer. And Lucifer is a character um, from the Sandman run. Lucifer, Morningstar. Um, The Lucifer TV show isn't the same actor, but... um, that run of the character did cross over with the Arrowverse, with the Crisis on Infinite Earths special, um, briefly. Um, so that's the only kind of scene I'd seen him in. But yeah, this week I've went back, I've watched the first season of Lucifer, um, which was quite enjoyable. Um, I mean, every episode is the same kind of formula, mm-hmm. but it's good enough. I th- I've been told it gets a lot better. It ran for three seasons, and then Netflix picked it up for another three. And I know it was quite popular in the last three seasons. So, um, fingers crossed, it does it does improve. But I am enjoying it. All right, well, that's good. Yeah. Um, to, uh, 
Um, I've been continuing watching the Golden Girls, as I said in our last podcast. Just, oh yeah, you know, just yeah. nice comfort, nice comfort viewing. But I, I've started watching uh, a TV series which was massively popular at the time. But the rest of the world, you know, it ended, uh, I think, twenty twelve or something. And the rest of the world's moved on. And I went, you know what? I'll, I'll start watching that series that was massive back in the day. Although I did see some episodes when it was originally broadcast, and I liked it at the time. And that's House. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, with uh, with Hugh Laurie in it. Um, when it was yeah, originally I've running, I did, I did catch... Them. Yeah, and, you know, it seemed like a good series, and I had seen some of the episodes when it was originally running and, and, and liked it. Um, but, yeah, so I've been watching some of the uh, the episodes of the first series, and it, it's like what you were saying about uh, Lucifer, just... It, it, it is very formulaic. Mm-hmm. Um, like, ridiculously so, you know... Um, just obviously you're presented uh, with an odd medical case um none of them can uh they're trying to all work out what it is mm-hmm. uh they've got a very short uh time frame to uh to treat the patient um house's team all sort of guessing um the way that the sort of behave in every episode is sort of like roughly the same uh you know, there's one character in particular who will always suggest something, and it's always wrong. And of course, House gets it right all the time. Um, oh, that's so funny. Yeah, it, it's exactly the same with Lucifer. Each episode, um, they're presented with a crime. It's it's a it's a simple who done it, and it's mm-hmm. always the obscure character that shoehorned in at some point, which is completely a relative. Why are they given this character some kind of brief development, and then they're gone? Mm-hmm. And in every episode the detective Lucifer works with, she, she's always presented with like evidence that Lucifer is actually Satan and she's like, she denies it and it's like week by week. You just want to grab right. her and shake her. It's so annoying. <laughs> yeah. So it's, a, it's a slightly more sophisticated version of Scooby-Doo. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm not. I'm not saying that as a criticism. But it's fact. It's like it's like with House. It's like yes, it's got this formula, um, but there's just something really uh, just comforting to to watch it. I, I I do actually like the the style of the show and it how it's presented, and I do like the cast, and of course Hugh Laurie's just uh, brilliant in the part. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's it, you should just go. My God, this is really formulaic. Every episode follows exactly the same beats, but. Um. Yeah, you know, still quite, still quite like it. So, yeah, w- uh, watching that. I don't know what uh, series are you know when I finish watching House, I'm just going, what other series that I, that I can watch was was massively popular and uh, I've moved on. Dynasty, I don't know, <laughs> but or Dallas, who knows? But we'll, but we'll see. But yes, I've been watching, watching House and enjoying that. That's good. I've watched the first episode of She Hulk. Was good. Oh, and. It was good. The first episode is like a self-contained origin story told very fast. Um it was it was enjoyable. I don't it it wasn't telling of what to come. Um so I'm curious to see where it goes. Yeah, oh, right, okay. Yeah, but yeah, it was an entertaining first episode. Mm-hmm. Um Oh, uh, just in terms of uh, Doctor Who news, the next uh, collection Blu-ray box set's been announced. Have you seen that? It has. Season uh, two? Yes, season two. So, because I've been really, really wanting um, a William Hartnell um, season to to be released. Uh, It had been rumoured... for quite a while, I think since the beginning of of the year, that uh, the next two box sets were going to be um, season twenty two, uh, which turned out to be the case, and then the next rumor that was doing the rounds was that it's likely to be season two, and that's proven to be correct. I don't know where people are getting this information from to make these predictions, but uh, some people seem to be on the ball with it. Um, and there seemed to be some logic of going, well, if we are going to see a series that early on, one of the black and whites, it's likely to be season two because of all the early series, it's the most complete. Um, it only has two episodes missing, uh, which are episodes 
two and four of the crusade all right but every other episode is uh you know can be viewed how uh, um, how has the box set handled that the two missing episodes f- yeah from what i can gather they're not animating them um i think they're going to be um i'm guessing they'll still be included oh yes they'll still be included uh but i think they're going to be some sort of photographic um reconstruction yeah um i think more akin to like the mark you know Polo how one that was a that was a cut down version though wasn't it yes that was uh but yeah that's uh that's what i was going to say the marco polo one on the beginning box set i think it was called uh and to be perfectly honest i i really liked that i thought that was a very good um yes as you say it was condensed i think it was 30 minutes of a six mm-hmm. episode story but i really liked it i thought they that they did an incredibly good job of it and i know uh, uh I know a lot of hard work has gone into the 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 animated reconstructions uh, that we that we have, but personally speaking, I haven't really been that keen on them, um, and I think that's down to a couple of things. One, they haven't had uh, necessarily the budget to do, you know, r- really detailed animations. That isn't to disparage the the output that we that we have had. It's actually been good, but. Um, the other thing as well is I think because obviously they're being very they're, they're sticking to the 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 audio that we have of those stories I think that actually makes the animations a bit rigid mm-hmm. um yeah the, the there are things to uh, applaud the animated uh, reconstructions for but it, it hasn't quite clicked with me so the fact that we're not having those two episodes fully animated to to be perfect honest i'm quite happy with that because um when the ice warriors was released on vhs uh because that has a couple of episodes missing i really loved how they did the reconstructions of those um and that's the sort of thing that i would prefer um but anyway we'll 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 see how how it works out but i'm really looking forward to that uh, series it's uh it's william hartnell um who i think is great uh, it's got some cracking good stories i mean the crusade funny enough is my favorite william hartnell story uh but it's got um uh, the romans which i absolutely love it's got the chase which is a not necessarily the best dalek story but an awful lot of fun and it was the first hartnell story i ever saw uh it's got the daleks invasion of earth which is a classic so you know there's some really good stories um, there. it looked like the dvd special effects from Dalek Invasion of Earth. Mm-hmm. Does it look like they've been remade at all? Not from... In, uh, yeah, because there were some clips of it in the trailer. Not from what I can see, but they did such a good job the first time round. I don't think they need to be redone. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, it, it, yeah, it looked like that's what was... Uh, they've just carried that over. But, you know... if Fair enough. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It uh, they did a great job first time round. Those, those redone special effects, I, th- I think, are, are really, really good, and just sell that story a bit, a bit more. Um, oh, good. Any so, special yeah, th- features w- worth a watch by the looks of it as well? Well, the the interviews that Matthew Sweet uh, carries out look a lot of fun. Um, I always really enjoy those. Um, so he'll be interviewing William Russell, and. Uh, Maureen O'Brien and the interview with uh, with Maureen O'Brien who played Vicky looks really good um, there is also oh for goodness sake um, there's a documentary on one of the writers I've forgotten which one it's not is it David it, David Whittaker yes there's an interview about uh, the the life of David Whittaker which I'm really looking forward to and from the trailer, there was something about him being blacklisted for some reason. And I was like, oh, okay. So I think there's there's quite a lot of intrigue with that. But just hearing more about... Um, because I think his uh, impact on Doctor Who is much more significant than perhaps he's given credit for. So I think they also look into that. So I think that'll be really good to, to watch as well. That's cool. You pre-ordered that, yeah? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Straight onto that one. That's good. And you'll be expecting some replacement discs when the Crusade turns up, I expect. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. Although, the, uh, I haven't been keeping an eye on that, but I'm not aware of any replacement discs being offered for the uh, for the sets. 
recently. Quite a while. Oh, right. That's good. Yeah. It's a good sign. Which, which is... A bit of quality yeah, yeah. control was needed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's... Uh, so that is a good sign. Unless there has been some announcements and they've completely passed me by. But, uh, yeah. I think quality control is, is there, so... It's been implemented. Yes. Mm. Oh, uh, before we move on, uh, we've got a new patron. Uh, I think we should give a very big thank you to Mark. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mark. It's uh, oh, it's just really, really appreciated. Yes. Yeah. Um, I play some. Uh, probably got some music to play in the background as well. You can hear this theme. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, that's good. Um, so yeah, um, I'd just like to mention that. Sorry, I cut the music off there. Went to my notes. Um, Mark is the first person in history to achieve all the virtual badges on his cloisterbellpodcast.com profile. Yes, he is. Yeah. Quite an achievement. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And he's, uh, as a patron, he's also got in contact with us to, to um, ask us to review a Doctor Who story. Which we will be doing, Mark. Promise you. Uh, Rob and I just need to have a conversation of when we will schedule that in. Yeah, but it'll be we want to do it sooner rather than later. Um, yeah. Should you announce the story or hold off? Ooh, um, it's a whopper. Let's say that. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. It's it, it's going to be a, a it's it's a mammoth story. It's a big one. Uh, is, is yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, and yeah, we'll leave it at that. So, yeah. um, Mark obviously knows which story he he, rec- he recommended. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, he knows. A nice surprise. When- yeah, he knows. Yeah. Um, but it'd be a nice surprise, I suppose, for the listeners when we will get to it. But um, yeah, the plan is to do that one sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think we've got a new name for Mark, haven't we? Because he's such a well decorated, honorary fan of the show. He's got all. Oh, he's yes. got all the badges up on his profile, over on yes. the, over on the website. Um, so from this day forth, he shall be known as. Go on, Rob. The Brig. Yeah, <laughs> the Brig. So there you go, Mark. Yeah, you're yeah, the quite, Brig. That's quite a good title. But not the Brig, you know the the uh, the the cybernized dead version of the Brig. Uh, not the you know, cyber the, brig. The, the proper one. Yeah, not the cyber brig. The you know the, the the proper one. The real one. Yeah, the, the the real one. The one we all love and remember. The real McCoy, but not yes. the McCoy. Yeah, no, but not the McCoy. No. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that in the coming weeks, possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, the big the big story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's flux again. No, it's not. Um. <laughs> So, so uh, moving on. So uh, we're going to be looking at uh, two stories today, uh, which are big finish. They are The Haunting of Malcolm Place and Subterranea. Um, these are obviously big finish stories. And the idea is that they fit into season 18, which is Tom Baker's uh, final season. So we've... The stories that we've looked at in relation to this in previous podcasts uh, is The Beast of Kravenos uh, as one, The Eternal Battle, uh, The Silent Scream and Death Rass, and The Leisure Hive. Um, so having reviewed uh, four big finished stories as part of this, we finally got to a televised uh, story, which was The Leisure Hive, which was the very first story in season 18. As soon as we arrived at uh, the televised stories, we're back to big finish. Um the next televised story is Megloss, but we don't get to that for, for quite some time. It's just like, oh, jeez, oh. why did I suggest doing this? The for pace is anyway. terrible. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it gives us an opportunity to, to look at uh, Big Finish Audio. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, which is good. So the, the first story we're looking at is The Haunting of Malcolm Place. And the plot synopsis for that story is, which I've uh, borrowed or nicked from the Big Finish website, Whilst on the way to visit the town where Henry James lived, a chance encounter with a spiritualist on a train sends the Doctor and Romana on the trail of a ghost. 
It's the most convincing case of a haunting he's ever heard of, he tells them. And so, on their arrival, does it appear to be. Things go bump in the night at Malcolm Place. The voice of a crying child, birds bursting into flight, strange movements in a seance. seance. The Doctor is determined there must be a rational explanation, but is science always the answer to everything? The cast and crew, Tom Baker plays the Doctor. Yep. Lala Ward plays Romana. Dennis Black, sorry, De- Dennis Denise Black, sorry, plays uh, Mrs. <laughs> yeah, Dennis De- Denise Black plays Mrs. Mountford. Benedict Briggs plays the child. Gunnar Guthrie plays Morris. Simon Jones plays Talbot. Ricky Lawton plays Tom. Paul M- Mullenry plays Jack, and Fiona Sheehan plays Beatrice. The story was directed by Nicholas Briggs, written by Paul Mullenry, and produced by David Richardson. Hmm. Um, I've got the trailer here. Are we, are we playing trailers today or not? I hadn't planned to, but we can do. Actually, I think that'd be a good idea. Have you got a, Have you got lined up? Yeah. All oh, right, fantastic. Go Coming soon from Big Finish Productions. We can talk over this if you'd like, Liam. Too. Fourth Doctor Adventures. All oh, right. Okay. No, no, I want to do a commentary. Thomas and I are on our way to a most definite case of haunting. <laughs> Isolated house called Malkin Place. Two residents, Beatrice and Morris, 23 years old. Very strange goings on. Oh, oh God. Beatrice. Oh, wait. What is it? Someone's coming. Who's there? There. No. Coming over the marsh. Not possible. Turn of the Screw by Henry James. It's good you're reading the best literature from this period of Earth's history. Is that noise again? From the attic? Look, it's a venerable old townhouse. It's bound to make some odd noise. Are you worried it's haunted? That's it. I'm going up there. It's fine, Romana. Do you know who's up there? If you must know, I wrote myself a little note. Dear Doctor, don't go up to the attic. Best wishes, the Doctor. (laughs) And if there's one person I trust absolutely, it's myself. Stop! Nobody move. Definite cold spot. And strongest just here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you all for gathering. We are speaking to the spirits. Present in this house. It's a trick. It must be. One day, I share your suspicion. There we go. Oh, that was creepy. Yeah. It was a bloody long trailer as well. Sorry, that was a bloody two minute trailer. Thanks, Big Finish. <laughs> yeah, was it ever going to end? Um,. Yeah, it was a good trailer though, although a bit too long. Yeah, geez. maybe we'll um, we'll crack a few jokes over the next one. Have a bit of a chat in between, like a half time show. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. but um, so that uh, thanks for playing that, Rob. That actually does give a, a good uh, flavour of uh, the atmosphere of the story. Um, um, when I was listening, to, yeah. I, well, mm, maybe, yeah, maybe I'm overselling it. Uh, I think the trailer bit. oversells it. Yeah, it's not. It, it's. There are atmospheric moments within the story, but but not as much as that trailer perhaps suggests. Yeah. Um, but when I was listening to the story and I was thinking about it afterwards, I, I thought the, the there were three thing there were three things that it reminded me of, and perhaps were very strong influences to the story. One is uh, Sherlock Holmes and the Hound of the Baskervilles in particular. Um, you know, and it, it, perhaps it's it's a bit obvious to begin with because you know the Doctor and Romana are in their own uh, lodgings at Baker Street, so obviously that has a you know yeah. it's Baker Street, so obviously that's massively Sherlock Holmes based. It is. Did you know um, that it's also a running thing through Big Finish, the Doctor's house in Baker Street? Y- yes, uh, I think we've already had some of it with uh, some of the. Um, Tom Baker stories we've looked at. Uh, ah, right. uh, I think I, I think I read somewhere as well that it's used in some Fifth Doctor and Eighth Doctor adventures. Yeah, uh, I think it it was first introduced in the Fifth Doctor, the the haunting of Thomas Brewster, I think, uh, mm. and it does it does it is featured extensively 
in the the later Eighth Doctor stuff. Right. Okay. And I wonder if that was influenced by the the Virgin New Adventures, because in in some of those, the, the Doctor has his own country house, ah. and um, so I'm wondering if it's like, oh, right, okay, well, let's have the Doctor have his own um, dwellings. Yeah, and the the Fourth Doctor had his own little cottage, didn't he? In the the Nest mm. Cottage Chronicles or whatever it was, the radio stuff. Oh yes, I forgot about that. Yes, yes, you're right. He did. He did. Yeah. Um, but the fact it's Baker Street is obviously a very Sherlock Holmes. You know, the, the, it's Baker Street. So, you know. but uh, the fact that he then decides to you know travel to the location uh, by train, um, and then arrives at um, arrives at the location and it's all boggy marsh, marshes and and uh, mists and all the rest of it and. Uh, and that reminded me of the Hound of the Baskervilles. Uh, perhaps not necessarily the um, the story itself, as written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, but very much, you know, very much the film and TV adaptations that we've had, so, uh, particularly the one from I think it was fifty eight, the late fifties, with Peter Cushing as um, as Sherlock Holmes, um, and all getting stuck in the mud and perhaps you know drowning in the marsh and all the rest of it. So there's that. The other thing it reminded me of was The Others, um, which was the film from 2002, I think, uh, with starring Nicole Kidman. Doesn't it also... Is not is that Bruce Willis? Eccleston? No. I'm thinking what? of Signs. Was that Bruce Willis? No, you're thinking of... The not Alien. Signs. You're thinking of Sixth Sense. Yes, I've merged Sixth, Sixth Sense with Signs, thinking it was The Others. Yeah, Signs is the one with Mel Gibson in, isn't it? Mel Gibson, yeah, in the crop circles. Yeah. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, I'm it's quite decent film, but I haven't seen it in years. I've but, gone off topic uh, here. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> never, yeah. But anyway, yes. So it reminded me of the others. So uh, the others, if you haven't seen it, is a very good film. Um, but I am going to. I mean, it came out in 2002, so I am going to give a massive spoiler f- for it. Um, which the the big thing is that Nicole Kidman is living in a house. Uh, with her two children um her husband has went to war um and is poss- possibly dead i'm sure that um, i can't remember if it was that christopher eccleston who played him i don't know like in a really brief hang on i'm gonna have Could to google be. this you google it yeah have a turns look. out it's daniel craig or something like that but uh, <laughs> hang on i'm sure it's christopher eccleston in a really brief um, appearance as in the other's film. Do, 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 do. Right. Good old IMDB. Yeah. Should put something on to kill the silence. <laughs> Should do. Yes, it is Christopher Eccleston. So there is a there's a there is another Doctor Who reference. But anyway, um, so Nicole Kidman uh lives in this uh, this big old house. Um, with her two children, Christopher Eccleston, who's her husband in the film, uh, is a soldier feared dead. My memory is he does come back at the end, but they all think that the, the house is haunted. But actually, the massive twist at the end is actually Nicole Kidman and the children are the ghosts, and who they okay. thought were the ghosts were actually the current inhabitants of the house. Um, there's a little bit of that that slips into the haunting of Malcolm Place. I mean, I mean, it begins with the fact that um, Beatrice th- uh, thinks her, her um, you know, her father's just died. Thinks her brother, who's fought, who's fighting in the F- First World War, uh, is dead. But then suddenly arrives four years later, completely out of nowhere. But there's other elements of the fact that the house is is haunted and who the who those ghosts are feeds into a bit. So the others feels like uh, it's a bit of an uh, an inspiration to the story. And the other thing is the 1963 horror film The Haunting, um, <clears throat> which has a was I mean, there a late nineties The Haunting? Yes, there was I might have seen uh, that a one. remake of it. Uh, but I mentioned the sixties version because. Um, that's the better one anyway but yes there is a one from the 90s and although it's not a like for like you do have a sort of talbot uh, talbot character in there um 
who who goes to this house knowing it's haunted and investigates it and there's all sort of atmospheric creepy things that go on so to me it's sort of um the the way that i read the haunting of malcolm place it's it's very much influenced by those um those three things um I've got a question. You know the the character Talbot, who's the 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 spiritualist. Yes. Yeah. What did you think of his character? Well, I don't know. He he seemed nice enough, um, mm-hmm. if not a bit misguided. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know nothing in particular to say. Did you like the character? Did you dislike him? He irritated like him. me a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, didn't no, he? He's, he's, no, I mean, Simon Jones uh, plays the part well, but um, it's that plummy eccentric Victorian performance thing. And it reminded me a bit of Joseph Williamson from Flux. Uh, perhaps a, a toned. Yeah, a toned down version of it. But you know how when we were reviewing Flux and I was saying, you know, the Joseph Williamson character is, look at me, I'm a Victorian eccentric. And I thought that was overplayed. It, the, the Talbot character sort of reminded me of him a bit, um, so it 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 irritated irritated mm. me a little a little, but you know, is what it is, I suppose. Um, but the so this is a two episode story. So the first episode is um, you know the Doctor and Roma, Romana um, arriving at this house, which uh, appears to be haunted. Um, there's all the you know we hear children laughing, which is always a creepy thing. <laughs> no one, don't know why. Why is children's laughter seen as it's it's an odd thing? We both recognise it as adorable, but it's it's very easily used in uh, in like ghost stories and being really creepy. What yeah. is it with that, Rob? Uh, I don't, children are terrifying. <laughs> do your kids terrify the, you? They do. Yes. So <laughs> sometimes you'll have you seen that? Do you remember that scene in Gremlins where they're running around in the loft? And the mother goes up with a knife. Oh, God, I can't, I can't remember. I haven't seen Gremlins in years. Well, no, I, 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 I have that same kind of moment quite frequently. Now, I don't take the knife upstairs, but they'll be <laughs> running around upstairs and your heart's racing and you, you, you're looking through the banister and you'll, a, a little face will come out the shadows staring at you. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, children are terrifying. Especially at night, yeah. <laughs> right, okay, fair enough. So they are generally scary. So yeah, so uh, I mean, d- so listen to the story of like hearing creepy child ghosts. Yeah. Does the story break you out in a sweat or anything? Um, it doesn't. But yeah, ki- yeah, kids are pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I didn't feel so th- particularly scared by this story, uh, <laughs> nor did I believe. It was the supernatural. I guess the Doctor mm. and Romana were quite dismissive of that. You know, spirituality, mm. well, that's a load of rubbish. Science yes. is the, is what it is. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I'd be very surprised if a Doctor Who story did fully go down the, oh, clearly it's the paranormal. That's not what Doctor Who's about. And, you know, particularly with the Doctor. Um, although the Doctor t- it tends to be a bit more um, op- open-minded about certain things but uh, but romana's character you know romana as a person is very much no it's totally science in fact funnily enough uh there's a uh, which we're going to be reviewing uh later on at some point but the story state of decay there's a bit when uh the the, the doctor and romana are uh, imprisoned and they're just having a conversation and he's going you know do you want to hear a ghost story say like, not particularly and he just ignores her and tells her a ghost story and then says, you know, just like, um, you know, there are other ways to, to look at the the universe that aren't scientific. And Romana just scoffs at that statement. Um, and in that sense, I think I think the haunting of Malcolm Place actually really nail their characters uh, very well. And uh, and obviously Tom Baker and Lana Ward uh, are playing it very well, as you would expect. But the, the script, I think, really nails their, their characters. And th- I mean, but as you said, Rob, it's very much evident from, from the off that although ghostly shenanigans are, are taking place, there's going to be a rational, or was, I was going to say a rational explanation, but there's been Doctor Who. It's a, be a, a sci-fi bonkers, explanation. Yeah, it's a bizarre, bonkers science fiction explanation, yeah. which we'll get to um, uh, in a bit. But we do have this character called Mrs. Uh, Mountford, who just 
pops up uh, once in a while in the course of the story. Mm-hmm. You know, pops up, no one can hear and say, whoa, where the hell did you come from? And then promptly vanishes. And, uh, you know, the, the suggestion being that um, th- th- there's something ghostly about her. Or maybe there isn't, but th- there is a suggestion that, that she is. Um, in terms of the atmosphere of the story i mean do, do, you, do you think it works do you think i mean i know that you said that you didn't find the story particularly scary but do you think it's did did it work was it effective or could it have been better what do you think i don't think it worked at all um maybe that's because of the confines of a, a two-part story because by mm. by the end of the first episode you're near in the climax of the story pretty mm. much so i i really don't think it worked for me um I kind of presumed there would be a, a rational sci-fi explanation in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just needed to find out what it was. Simple as. I don't know. I was a bit I was a bit disappointed. I've got to admit, I was as well. And especially because... Um, I mean, one, I don't think... I don't, it doesn't need this comparison. I don't... I think in of itself, if you're just approaching the story without any preconceptions or knowledge of other Big Finish stories of what it's trying to do and build that atmosphere and everything like that, it doesn't quite work. But I can't help but think, you know, when, you know, when you've got stories like, um, what's it called, Rob? Is it called The Midnight Chimes? Yes, The Chimes, the of, Chimes Midnight. of Midnight. Chimes of Midnight. That, uh, I mean, it's been a while since I've listened to it, but that's a really, really cracking good Eighth Doctor audio adventure, which uh, is genuinely creepy and very yeah. atmospheric. We need to do that um, one. We need, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll work towards. That'll be our incentive to get through them. Yeah, that's actually good. And I think that'll be a really good treat. I haven't listened to that story in a while, but I remember it a, a, a great deal. And, you know, so Big Finish can can do this, can do, you know, really good, creepy, horror Doctor Who audio stories, um, which this isn't. Um uh, and the the first the first episode ends on this this cliffhanger of a séance which has gone bonkers. It you know uh, ghosts are around, crockery's being thrown around and smashed, and and then uh, the doctor vanishes at the end. Um, which is very quickly resolved in episode two. Very quickly, yeah. Very quickly, and I mean, what do you think of that? Uh, how it's resolved. Uh, a bit odd. Oh. I, I mean, I didn't think he was thrown through a mini vortex. I, I, I was, I thought, oh, maybe there's a, a practical element to how he's vanished. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he was, he was found very quickly. Yeah, and oh, what's happened? He's been transported outside into the marsh. He he is slowly sinking, uh, but he's very quickly rescued. Um. How he's rescued does tie into one of the characters and his backstory. I mean, I don't want to give everything away for anyone who may be interested in listening to this, so it's not going to be full spoilery. But how he how he is rescued does feed into one of the characters' backstories, which does uh, which is important to how um, things are resolved mm. at the end of the story. So. You know, in that sense, I think it, you know, it, it's well written. But uh, in other aspects, it feels a bit very easy. And I think, maybe, I mean, if this was a longer story, Rob, do you think it would have been better? Or do you think uh, actually... It had the potential. It, it, w- it had the potential. Mm. Right, okay. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, I think yeah. The, the limitations of a two-part story, it, mm. need, it needs to know what it's doing from the off. Um, I, and this was going somewhere, but before it could go anywhere, it was being wrapped up. So, yeah, not enough, not enough there. I don't think. Yeah, I think so because um, it's it's two half hour episodes, so it's mm. it's an hour, and that is a very quick running time, especially for this sort of thing. Um, so I definitely th- wouldn't the... say it was bad. No, no, it's, it's not bad. Um, but I think I think I agree with you. I think there's a potential. There was potential there for this to be a bit, you know, uh, a bit of a richer story. Uh, but, mm-hmm. um, but you know, it, it ties up to um, the First World War um, actually 
the character was, you know, one of the characters was fighting there, came across some alien technology, which um, transported him four years into his into the future, which is how he survived the First World War. But actually, he was supposed to do something in the First World War. So actually, the explanation is that uh, the reason why all this odd activity is taking place is actually because there's there's you know times going amok. It's trying to drag him back to the First World War of, you mm. know, where he was fighting and you know, that, that all ties in. Um, I think this, the story's... Um, <laughs> mediocre, possibly, is probably the mm-hmm. word I'd describe it. Yeah. And it, it ends on a sort of cliffhanger a little bit. You know, just when you thought everything was resolved moment, there's a little sort of like a... just a little spin on something when you think that everything's had, you know, tied up in a neat bow and everything's explained that there's a moment between two characters, which, you know, is probably the best, maybe the best part of the story. Yes, I think so, actually. Um, and I, th- I looked into this a little bit because it, it seems to suggest that maybe there's going to be a follow up story. Right. Okay. Um, but apparently it's not. It's ah. it's not a setup for a follow up, which I actually you know I'm a little bit disappointed with. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, am I right in thinking? Well, I know they did give a century that this 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 device which caused all this was from the forty ninth. Yeah. Uh, however, it's it's um, it's reminiscent of something from Talons of Wang Chiang and also modern Doctor Who. Yes, that's true. I, I did think that actually it was going to be revealed that it was uh, it was the the sort of um, uh, the thing that uh, Captain Jack Harkness uses. Yeah. Um, so it does have that connection. Um, and then actually, I thought it was going. To, I thought it was. Uh, then I thought it was going to reference uh, the Eternal Battle. Ah, right. Um, which is one of the earlier Big Finish uh, stories that we looked at, which forms part of this this season 18 uh thing that we're looking at so i thought it was it was it was going to reference that but it but it doesn't um right <laughs> but anyway uh <laughs> so um that's all i've really got to say about uh the haunting of malcolm place is there anything you you want to add um no i, I didn't make many notes um i didn't think there was much noteworthy to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was perfectly fine. Yeah, uh, I was. I would, you know, I wouldn't say I wouldn't listen to it again. And maybe in mm. a few years, I might try. I might think, oh, maybe, maybe I was wrong about that. Let's give it another go. Uh, I might do that, but who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, th- there's a part of me that goes, you know what? I probably wouldn't mind listening to it again. I mean, I was, I was entertained for an hour, for the hour that it was on. Uh, I didn't think it was the the best story, and it's. I thought it was fine. It's like, like like you were saying, Rob. I think there was potential there for it to be a bit better, and I certainly think it could have been a bit more atmospheric. Maybe but. this two part formula um, isn't the way forward. Like the McGann ones, now these days, do like mm. one hour plus episodes, um, yeah. and most of them are standalone, and mm. they're really good. Yeah, so t- yeah, maybe that's something that we're discovering with these stories. Maybe the the, the format um, doesn't quite work because mm. the the skills there. I mean, the the writer's done a, a you know a reasonably good job, and the talent, yeah, and you know the, well, and the talent there with with the use of you know the, with the the music and the sounds and everything like that. It's uh, but this is this is something that I'm starting to feel with these big Finnish audio stories that we've been listening to that there's a, I'm feeling a little bit of a sense of disappointment with them. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, I, I really like, you know, the silent scream has kind of stuck with me a bit. I remember that one quite well, but, um, and I think I probably, uh, I think I'll, I'll definitely go back and listen to that one again. Cause mm. I quite like that. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling a little bit disappointed with these, and I think it is, I think it is to do with 
the, the format of it. Mm. I think one thing we, we've probably started to um, forget is that when these came out, um, I think we were just so grateful to have Tom Baker back in the role. Yes, that's true. Um, yeah. Because it was like it was like an unexpected thing, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe, yeah, um, maybe that. And I he seems to be, uh, and he it. seems to be enjoying them. Oh and yeah, has really taken up. I mean, ever since he's he, ever since he's been doing them, he's been a big advocate for them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like any, any interview that he's been given, he seems to mention. You know, I remember like from the fiftieth anniversary onwards, he'll always mention, you know, Big Finish. Yeah. And um, I watched a clip with uh, Christopher Eccleston uh, being interviewed by Lorraine Kelly, and he spent most of that bigging up Big Finish, <laughs> advertising <laughs> his box set. Yeah, and again, you know, he's you know, it's it's sort of the same thing actually, because I think that was a big surprise for people that you know Christopher Eccleston would never do it, it, and here he is. Yeah, uh, and yeah, exactly. He's come back to it, surprised everyone, and seems to be enjoying it. So, yeah. And that's the main thing. But I, and as I said, um, uh, Tom Baker and Lala Ward, I think, um, uh, I really like their performances. I remember when we were when we were listening to the Beast of Kravenos, there was something about their, particularly with Lala Ward. I don't know. It felt like there was a bit of a disconnect. But I think at this point, you know, she's fully into the flow of it, and I really liked uh, you know her performance in the story as well as Tom Baker's and, and everyone else's. But, uh, um. I mean that it was a fine, you know, it was it was it was fine, but I just feel like it could have been a bit better. So you know, in terms of the ranking, I, I'm actually giving this one an average. How about you? Um, yeah, same same thing in mind. Um, mm. Not not a poor story, mm. just um, a bit of a flat story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that. So the next one we're looking at is Subterranea. Yes. So the 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 plot synopsis for that. Um, one thing I will say is because I've, I, I, I much preferred this story, but obviously we're going to talk about that. So, the TARDIS is going underground. When the Doctor and Romana find themselves buried beneath the surface of an alien world, they're soon swallowed up by a giant burrowing machine. This is where the inhabitants of this planet live in huge, constantly moving drill towns, chewing up the fuel and resources of the planet in order to survive. But something else lurks in the earth, something that feeds on the drill towns, something that is relentless and will not stop. The Silex are hunting. Interesting uh, use of the word earth. Yeah, but it's not the planet Earth. I mean, it's, you know, soil and rocks yeah. and shit. Um, <laughs> so, uh, do you want to play the trailer? Oh, yeah, let's find it. Um, it reminds me of um, in Flash Gordon. Is it Emperor Ming? And um, mm. yeah, he, he would be creating earthquakes, and then and then he's like, he he hadn't heard of the planet Earth. I'm I thinking of something else. Ignore me. Cue the trailer. No, no, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. I want to watch more uh, Flash Gordon now. Oh, Mr. West, oh, it's them! They come for us. The Silex! Ah! Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, The Fourth Doctor Adventures Subterranean. Silex. Fighting machines, abominations forged in the flames of war. The Silex haven't been seen in this strong. Just gonna open a beer. Well, they're here now. I think it's appropriate for this type of story. Yeah. It has What's the, the appearance beer? of solid rock, but with a very low density. These are some ales I got for my birthday. Oh, nice. Brew, brew good air. Um, and it's increasing. It's piney and punchy. That's cute. Mr. Stoker, that blue box. Average expelled with the rest of the clinker. Buried, never to be found again. All organics must be corrected and modified. Never! Organics attempting resistance commence incineration. All right, that's far enough. Take us to your leader. <laughs> I always love saying that. We're doomed. 
done for, destined to die. So, Subterranea. Yeah. Uh, another uh, another odd trailer in that... Well, at least with the, the Haunting of Malcolm Place, I mean, they, they were really... You know, it's a ghost story, so they're really trying to sell the atmosphere, but, and they, they were massively oversell it. The story's not as atmospheric as the trailer. That trailer is a bit odd because I don't think it actually in any way conveys the, the actual tone of the story, which is a lot more light-hearted. There's still a threat there, but... Mm-hmm. Um, Anyway, uh, just the cast and crew. So Tom Baker obviously plays the Doctor. Lala Ward plays Romana. And then we have John Bank- John Banks, who plays Silex and Mr. Stoker. Are Matthew they Coddle. all moles? Yes, they are. They're all yes. moles, okay. They are, yeah. Just wondered. Uh, Matthew Cottle plays Mr. Maxwell Wilberforce Bell. Abigail McKern plays Mrs. Lucretia Bell. John Slavin plays Miss Arabella Wagstaff and Mrs. Betsy Wagstaff. And Robbie Stevens plays Mr. Jellico Wig and Mr. Wilfor Wagstaff. Um, uh, the story was directed by Nicholas Briggs. It was written by Jonathan Morris. Definitely a name I recognise in relation to writing quite a few Doctor Who uh, stories, including uh, uh, Doctor Who novels. And it was uh, produced by David Richardson. Um, so, um, it's a bit like that, uh, that book or comic that was adapted like by Peter Jackson recently, where the cities are eating each other. Which which one? What? I don't know. Is it Immortal Engines or something like that? I don't know. That one passed me by. But um, yeah. So um, the the story is is that uh, it's it, it, it's it kind of reminded me a little bit of how uh, Robots of Death starts. You know, you know how yeah. with uh, the Doctor and Leela arrive on the Sand Miner, and the Sand Miner is this big thing which is churning up the sound of a planet to get all the minerals. Mm-hmm. Um, it's sort of like that, but this is this is uh, this is uh, underground. Um, this planet has a l- l- very porous, soft rock. You've got these big uh, machine-like towns churning through all this stuff um, to get as much minerals and uh, uh, metals and all the rest of it in order just to, to carry on moving and carry on living. Um, and it's a it's a it's a good setup. I actually liked um, the. I actually like this the story in terms of it, not least of all because of the location. I think it's established uh, incredibly well, very quickly. You've got these characters. Uh, it's clearly taking a bit more of a light-hearted approach with um, with these characters, as which, as you said, Rob, they're, they're sort of like moles. Um, yeah, on the gives... on the CD cover, there is a mole with goggles. Yes, Just so that <laughs> listeners know they are moles. Yeah, but they're not moles; um, they're aliens. Yeah, the, the alien moles, um, which I just think is a, it just gave me a wonderful image of. Um, I, I, um, I really liked how things were described, but also it, it's not all um, it's not all through dialogue. The the, the sound uh, design of the story I think is very well, and it gave me a very good sense of place, and I felt like I was very I found it very easy to uh, imagine. The, the 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 story and the locations in the different rooms and so on uh, very well, and I like that visual contrast of, you know how uh, you know Romana is described as looking exotic, which obviously to these sort of uh, mole like creatures that they would be, but I just love that visual uh, juxtaposition between humanoids and mole like creatures. Um, uh, and moles are sort of these ad- ad- adorable, cute sort of funny like characters and it fits in you know um i can see why jonathan morris would marry up that visual image to the sort of characters he writes because there is a sort Mm of uh comedic light-hearted uh approach to them i think my favorite character is probably if i've if i've gotten the names right because this uh is mr maxwell wilberforce bell yes um yes I, I, I love uh, Matthew Cottle's, um, or was it Cottley? Anyway, I, I love his uh, performance of the character and his verbalization of it. For some reason, it, it makes me think of uh, Harold Wilson, um, the the uh, the Labour British Prime Minister of the sixties and uh, mid seventies. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't know. So I just had this image of Harold Wilson as a mole. <laughs> uh, 
just with that voice it, it just sort of reminded yeah. me of Harold Wilson a little bit but yeah. like, it made me think that. of something a few days ago um, I was out with my youngest daughter and she points at something um, in someone's garden she said daddy mm. is that a real mole she's only six um, yeah. and there was like uh, like like a garden gnome, but a a mole sat up smiling. I'm like, no, that's not a real mole. All right, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, funny it was. Yeah. I also, I had a I had a dream this week. It's strange. Um, I'll just share it with everyone. Um, a few months back, I got like a hole at the bottom of the garden, which I think was actually a rat hole. Ugh, yeah. Right. Anyway, I, I filled it in. It came back. I filled it in again. And then I had a dream that the front garden was full of them. Oh, God. But right. in the dream, I had Thor's hammer, and I was, like, holding it up and then just casted lightning down into the, <laughs> into the rat holes. And my wife was screaming at the window, saying I was getting the lightning too close to the house. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Now, that's an MCU thing. film I'd watch. Yeah. Rob versus the rat. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's fine. I don't know how to follow that up. Um, but anyway, <laughs> back to some Terrania. Um that, that is a pretty cool dream, though. It's yeah. a good one. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, so th- anyway, th- so, so um, because we've got these these big ship things, and it's established that th- there was a war on the planet uh, many years ago. Uh, which was probably radioactive, so everyone was forced to to to, to go underground in these these big um, ship towns, um, and then it's established that th- there's these things called the Silex, which are out to get everyone, and they're sort of, I mean, basically they they're knock off Cybermen, aren't they? Yeah, um, is the word emerging of Cybermen and Daleks? Sorry? Is it Silex, like Cyber Daleks? In the name? Maybe in the... I don't think in terms of how it's spelled, but maybe no. in the... But yeah, they're a bit they're a bit of a Cyberman knockoff. Not that, yeah. not that Cyborgs are original to Doctor Who in any way. No, that's true. But, uh, yeah. But it, obviously, being t- it, the way that they are, they're very... You know, these were... Organic things which have been turned into um, automata- autonom- automatons. Yeah. You know, when you start saying a word and you realize you can't pronounce it. Um, y- you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's. Uh, b- but even though the, the comparison to the Cybermen is, is, is very obvious, it, uh, it, it does work uh, very well within the story. And you do get a visual image that, you know, that they don't look like Cybermen. No. And they don't quite look like moles. No. Um, but uh, the Silex are very cunning, and they're trying to establish uh, a trap to um, to get this uh, uh, to get every this uh, ship town uh, or township or whatever it's called uh, that the the Doctor and Romana and everyone else are on. Um, it's a um, um, does this story have anything interesting to say about marriage, Rob? Well, um, there was a mole who had a wife. Uh, how far do we go with spoilers here? Hmm. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe we've given the, <laughs> given the game away. But, uh, wow, the wife turns out to be a bit of a bi- um, <laughs> not pleasant person. Yeah. So um, she's all for the Silex. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she's a mole. She's a mole. Who's a mole? <laughs> Tries to get everyone silexed. Yeah. Um, he still and, loved her, though. Yeah, but he still, you know, he, he has this, you know, the very thing of going, well, I need to stand by my wife. And uh, and I think also there's a hope that uh, maybe, because she's, par- she's partially silexed. So yeah, maybe. On the inside. Uh, yeah, on the inside. And even though we're saying that the Silex are sort of like uh, like a knockoff Cyberman, but the way that they're sort of described and th- she actually becomes the queen, it's sort of like, oh, are these actually knockoff Borg? Yeah, yeah, I saw the comparison there. 
yeah um so there's all that uh that goes on but he he remains sort of like i'm I'm standing i'm standing next to my wife and you know because they've been married for 20 odd years and clearly loves her very much although that love is probably probably a bit misguided Mm. But I uh, I really liked how this story w- was told and the balance between it is a lot more humorous, but you know you do have the the there's action moments. Um, yeah, and you can kind of feel the atmosphere with the sound mm, design. Yes, it's it's done incredibly well with this story. Um, and that said, they were probably just like whacking pans and things into a microphone. <laughs> yeah, but you know it design. works. Um, <laughs> And even though the, the story is sort of confined to these places, it does it does go to sort of like sort of semi different locations. Um, mm-hmm. So it keeps the pace and the imagination going uh, throughout it, and it allows you know Romana to to uh, converse on her own with other characters, the Doctor with others, and so there's this wonderful you know the Doctor and Romana together, then they separate, then they come together, and, and so on. So. The, the the pace of the story and the interactions with the characters all remain partic- you know very very interesting um I feel like i'm sort of like uh, rattling through it. i mean because again it's it's a bit tricky sort of talking about these because they're they're very in a lot of ways they're very short stories i mean the, as we've said that they're, they're two half hour uh, episodes and it's not as if you know, the, the, so so because it's got that format, it's got to have a story. Just crack on and tell it very quickly. So it's not as if these are particularly rich, in-depth stories. And of just going, oh well, these there were these subtle themes woven in. There's none of that. It's just you know n- nuts and bolts storytelling. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know something as we were saying with the holding a Malcolm place. What that means is you've got the, the you've got a, an interesting uh, plot there, but the format of the story doesn't allow you to um, tell it as effectively as that story should be. But with something with Subterranea, I think what Jonathan Morris has done is has rec- you know, he's got a good idea for a plot, recognises um, you know, the, the tight structure he's allowed. And he, he, to me, I think he's actually nailed it. And I think looking at, you know, these two stories and as I've said, you know, with the, with the previous four as well, I actually think with these, with these formats, uh, the story, the stories which tend to be a little bit more light-hearted, I think, are much more effective. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, and, and you know, I mean, the Beast of Kravinos, I think, is is probably our least favorite of the ones that we've looked at. I mean, that was trying to do far too much within a very, you know, it, within a very limited, yeah, time structure. Um, and so the result of that it just came across as very disappointing. Uh, but with this, it's it's a very nuts and bolts fairly simple story but um uh, keeps with that has some some great characters played very well uh it's a little bit more light-hearted in nature but it balances that out, out well you know the, we do have the threat and we do have the action moments and, and so on and we have you know uh maxwell wilberforce bell i mean he's basically the, the hero at the end of the story uh and i liked how all, all that went on. It does mean the way that that unfolds. It's not wholly lighthearted. It is a, it is a little bit bittersweet. But Jonathan Morris, I think, has has balanced all the, you know, the the, the emotions very well. You've got the action. You've got the humor. You've got the um, the poignancy at the end, and so on. I think perhaps the only thing which which didn't quite work for me was actually the very very last scene. The story ends on, um, I think on a, a pretty crap joke, <laughs> personally. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, that aside, uh, though, it was good. Yeah. I mean, sorry, Rob. I, th- I feel like, like I've done a, like a really just like a whistle stop tour of the entire story and haven't really given you a, uh, the opportunity to talk about it. Um, no, that's cool. Um, good characters. Um, mm. The concept of subterranean kind of towns and things. Um, it's quite a stretch of the imagination, mm-hmm. um, but it was an interesting one. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so this was this was one that I liked an awful lot, and I definitely happily re-listened to this one. Yeah, 
I mean, in terms uh, so in terms of a review, uh, how, how would you rank it? Um, with this one, I'd say this is a good. Mm. Yeah. Um, and again, we had uh, we had we had the Doctor and Romana separated quite early on, mm-hmm. um, which is always good. We get to see them doing their own thing. Yeah. And then um, ine- inevitably meeting up again later on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was entertaining. Yeah. Listen yeah. To, yeah. Listen to it again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, this is definitely a, a good um, story. So, yeah, the Subterranean is definitely one that I would that I would recommend if you haven't if you haven't listened to it, give yeah. it a go. Mm-hmm. Well, we had no listeners' responses uh, this week. <laughs> no. I didn't think we would. Mm. Um, two two obscure stories from Big Finish. Mm-hmm. Most people that. Um, uh, might not have seen them, but hey ho, never mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you know, if you haven't listened to them, which is probably likely because, as you said, no listeners' responses. Um, definitely listen to Subterranea. As I said, I think uh, it's a it's a good story, told very well. It's it, it's one of those where it, I think it has everything. It's got really good characters, really good performances in it. The the sound design's really good. I think it, it's a, it's a really good story to to really just. Um, uh, let your imagination just uh, enjoy everything on offer. It has all the action, atmosphere, threat, humor. Uh, that you know, there's emotion in there. That you know, it's just a really good story. Mm. Yeah, would recommend. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, so um, anything else yeah. today then? No, I think uh, I think that's everything. Right. Okay. Um. So where will we be going next um, with the fourth Doctor? Uh, well, the next uh, fourth Doctor story, it, we uh, we'll just be looking at one story uh, for, for the next one. So, uh, given how quick these are, it'll probably just be a half hour podcast we'll be doing. Right. But that's called the Mavellan Grave, uh, which I'm actually really looking forward to, simply because it has the Mavellans in it, right, um, okay. who were you know, who were um, one of the main protagonists in the story Destiny of the Daleks. Yeah. Uh, so that should be a good one. Oh, good. That's just um, a is half an hour story? No, no. Half uh, an hour uh, review. I, no, no, I think our review will probably be half an hour <laughs> if we're lucky, but we'll see. But yes, uh, so that's the next fourth Doctor Big Finish. But in right. terms of our next pod, uh, podcast, Rob, what are we going to be looking at? Well, it'll, that'll depend on in the next few days where what we can plan. Um, so I'd say, you know... Tune in and find out. Ooh, so it's going to be a surprise for all of us. We'll see, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we know by then. (laughs) So just, yeah, rock up and then we'd actually... I'll let you know first. (laughs) Right, okay. (laughs) Or we could actually just do an experiment and then, you know, actually what ends up happening is we're reviewing two completely different stories but talking talking about them as if we're reviewing the same one. Yeah. See how how far we get away with it. That'll happen accidentally one week, I'm sure. (laughs) Sure, yeah. Um, quick mention of socials uh, facebook.com slash cloisterbell instagram cloister underscore bell and we're on twitter at podcast bell uh, we have our main hub which is cloisterbellpodcast.com all our podcasts are on there um, we are on patreon.com forward slash cloisterbell where we have a whole bunch of bonus episodes and uh, maybe we'll do some more bonus episodes soon Lee. uh yes we will are we squeezing uh, one out tonight probably not oh we could do have you got could something imp- in mind i don't know we could improvise yeah we could do actually yeah. right okay but yes um so if you're a patron what that gives you is it allows you early access um to our podcasts um usually it tends to be a, a day before that the main one's released but uh Sometimes it can be a bit earlier, but you do get early access. And as Rob said, there's a whole load of um, you know uh, special uh, podcasts and recordings uh, that we've got uh, for our patrons only. Yeah. Um, and much like Mark, you can unlock the special patron virtual badge for your yeah. profile over at closebellpodcast.com. Uh, and also, if you're a patron supporter, you can actually um, suggest... Sto- well, uh, actually 
tell us stories you want us to review and we will uh, review them so mark's uh told us one he would like us to review so we're, we're going to be doing that one uh He's a patron, uh, so we're going to be reviewing this. So if if you want us to uh, review a particular story, become a patron and tell us. Um, just like the Brig, so, just yeah. like Harry, just like Sonia. Mm-hmm. Be one of the team. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Well, we're going to go record a bonus episode right now. Um, yes. You want to find out what that's all about? Um, we haven't got a clue, but you can go find out now. <laughs> Not that we're winging it or anything like that. No. <laughs> um, yeah, well, but, tune uh, in, also tune in next week when, uh, yeah. yeah. Who knows? Who knows, exactly. Yeah, but, yeah, but tune in next week where we're going to... We'll be discussing something. Yeah. Um, so tune in next week to find out what we'll be discussing. Yeah. And then the week after that, it'll be the Mavell and Grave. So it'll, you know, Exciting we do have stuff. something planned that we know what we're doing, but yes. Yeah. I'll... Uh, I'll cue the um, the closing credits, Liam. Um, got anything to say? Uh, no, have you? <laughs> no, no final words. The TARDIS cloister bell. Imminent disaster. The cloister bell? Yes. What's Do you that? only get moles in the countryside? Uh, Cases device reserved for wild catastrophes and sudden calls. Ah, uh, that's a good question, actually. I, I, I don't think. Probably, actually. I've never heard of any. What you know, some never get them in the garden. Mole infestations in uh, you know the city centre or anything. Yes.